Hey guys, what's going on? Shaw here, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at another boss track guide and how to tank it. Today, we're going to be looking at Domina Venomblade in Plaguefall. This was a boss that was recommended or suggested by a few people that I cover. Uh, the boss is fairly simplistic with mechanics, though the positioning on this fight is a little tricky, especially when it comes to gathering up the Venomblade assassins that she spawns during the fight and during the encounter that are in stealth. So I'm going to be going over the strategy on positioning, how to tank her, what you need to look out for, and how your group can best tackle this boss, whether it's just in a Mythic Zero or in a very high level Mythic Plus key, to make sure you're getting this boss down successfully. So let's dive in. Domina Venomblade is the third boss of the Plaguefall instance, and like I mentioned, she has very simple mechanics, so to quickly just go over what she does, she has a passive aura that she applies essentially as soon as you pull her, which causes her attacks to do additional venom, like poison damage, or nature damage, however you want to look at it, uh, mainly to the tank with her autos, so you need to be careful of that, and then she also does a tank buster ability, like quote unquote, it's not really a dodgeable or avoidable, but it applies a debuff that makes you take 100% increased nature damage for eight seconds. This can be mitigated up front. It's upfront physical damage, but the additional damage you're going to take from her toxic blades, her melee, her melee strikes are going to be a essentially catastrophic if you don't dispel this or mitigate this in some way. So tanks, you're going to want to make sure you're using a tank buster when this mechanic happens. And then essentially for the rest of the fight, she's essentially going to spawn adds that are going to have to be gathered up and broken out of stealth and then the tricky part about this is that there's another aspect of this fight where it makes a you know she'll target a player that player has to run out of melee so how you counter this is by like spreading at the last second and stacking up right after the ability goes off so we're going to go through exactly where we're going to tank them and i'm going to kind of walk through positioning as well so this is a plague fall 18 fortified so some of the damage from this boss is going to be a little bit lower than normal we have the we're on the trail end or the tail end of a prideful buff so we're going to have a little bit additional damage at the start here uh but most of our cooldowns were spent on trash so um we're not going to go like too big out of the gate it looks like we have metamorphosis up but it doesn't really matter now this is an all melee comp there's really depends on your composition how you want to tackle this fight my group's mentality or whenever i run this dungeon is that just everyone should be stacked in melee if you're running two range, you could have two range stay next to each other outside of melee, and this can help you have more ground coverage for the room when you have to break adds out, but it really depends. So you're going to want to make sure you're stacked at all times. It just depends if you want to all stack in melee or if you want to have like two separate stack groups, one in melee and one in range. So this is a spiteful week, so I'm kind of pulling her into a weird spot at the start of the fight. Normally when you first pull this boss, you can tank her at her entrance. If you really want to min-max it, you could move her to the middle of the room, but with like range maybe wanting to drop like wild spirits or some kind of other abilities onto the ground, melee aren't going to want to be moving too much during this fight because they're going to have to later. They want to maximize their uptime. Thank you so much for the sub. I'm not even streaming right now, so thanks for, thanks for the follow, I mean. So essentially what's going to happen is at the very start of the fight, I'm going to pull her right here at the start. I'm dropping in her souls just to keep that spiteful away. And we're going to open on her. The positioning, again, like I said, we're all in melee. Cytotoxic Slash is the ability you're going to want to mitigate for. Now, luckily, I am a druid, so I can dispel it. You could kind of see it down here, is that um, I just dispelled myself. Paladins can also dispel, and so can monks. So we have a lot of options here for dispelling me. If you are playing a monk, paladin, or druid tank, you can dispel yourself. And I think every healer can dispel poisons except for priests and shamans. So for whatever reason, if you're running like a Demon Hunter Disc Priest, which is common, I guess, you're you're hoping that you're going to have a Dispel. If not, just make sure you have Mitigation up during that debuff's duration. It's not doing any additional damage from the dot, but her auto attacks are going to do additional nature damage. So that's just something you need to keep in mind. That's going to happen every 20 seconds. That's it. So just make sure you're you know cycling your Mitigation. If you have some kind of self-healing, using that while that debuff is active. Outside of that, she's really just doing melees, which for the most part can be mitigated about 70% of the time, more or less depending on the class. So her first thing she does is going to be the Shadow Ambush. Shadow Ambush, the player has to run out. Now, if you run out right away, there's a, there's a few problems with that. If the player runs out right away, they're losing uptime. Plus the Prey and the Weak debuff is probably going to get them trapped sooner. So when this debuff is applied, you're gonna the player who has it should run out last second. 
Now, obviously you have to trust everyone in your group. If you're in like a pug, sometimes they don't run out or they run out too early. As soon as that debuff pops, as soon as the Shamba ambush ends, our entire group is running over to meet him. It was very slight movement, but essentially what it is, is it's resetting his prey in the week so he doesn't get, you know, shrouded um, in webs. And then this is the big thing that I know a lot of people have problems with is getting these mobs out. So she does this thing called Brood Assassins and essentially she's spawning four adds and they are, you can even see the nameplates here. They're going to be in the center of every pool. If you're really quick, you can actually tab target them and hit them with a single target ability before they actually go fully stealthed. Once they go, once they spawn and they're in stealth and then you see just these pools on the ground, you need to get them out by using AoEs or very unique circumstances like you can use hunters can use flare to you know uncover them a demon hunter who's not taking damage can spectral sight there isn't much damage going out unless a blade has already hit him from the assassin but if a, if a demon hunter spectral sights right away they can like throw a glaive what i did here is if we back up a little bit so the shandow image is about to go off and then i'm gonna actually use stampeding roar as soon as it comes up here so i stampeding roar here and that allows us to spread out pretty quickly so we're having most of our melee go to the right and then back to the center and then our demon hunter is going to this back pool here so we're using aoe abilities i'm not going to go through all of them tanks you can typically use like thunderclap thrash swipe spinning crane kick um in just general aoe abilities uh death and decay like any kind of aoe ability you're going to want to make sure you're using them in the center of the circle because if you use at the edge it might miss them and getting these guys out as quick as possible is the best way to do it. And then you want to find a center stack point. So for us, they are spawning. We're going to back this up again. We're going to get them all out and then find the most center part of those four circles to stack up so I can get aggro. So for in this formation, roughly right here is probably the best place for you to meet back up to make sure you're getting aggro. Especially because melee are running out, like our demon hunter is grabbing this one. He's going to get aggro. So he's going to have aggro for a second here. You can see on the frame, you're going to want to just make sure that they're mitigating or the healer has heals out on them, or you're taunting this mob as soon as they spawn. So again, this is exactly where we're meeting. We're meeting in the center and we're just going to AOE these things down. And that's the general rotation of the fight. And then this uh, cytotoxic slash is going to come back out. Knocked me pretty low here because I'm also being meleeed by these other assassins. So this is where you're going to want to use a big defensive. When Cyto Cytotoxic Slash comes out, along when adds are up, that's when you're going to want to use things like your Survival Instincts, your Shield Wall. You're going to want to call for like Blessing of Sacrifice, a Pain Suppression, things like that. And that's pretty much it. It's going to rotate between that. It's going to be, you know, a Tank Buster, Spawning Adds, and then Shadow Ambush. There are a few tricky overlaps to this fight that you have to pay attention to. Um, sometimes they all happen at the same exact time. There's no reason to reset positioning on this boss. There's no reason for me to bring her back to the entrance. Essentially, we're going to just stack up. My melee, who are behind the boss, are going to run behind her to knock adds out, and I'm going to run in front of her to get adds out, and then we're going to meet back up in the center of the room, and you'll see this happen in probably about 15 seconds or so. So again, Shadow Ambush goes off on egg here and then you'll see i'll start to run over to make sure he's not to prey on the weak debuff falls off because you don't obviously want that to happen to you and then this is a weird overlap because shadow ambush comes out as soon as assassins do as well and the dispel so i dispel myself as you can see down here assassins are going to spawn and then she's going to cast shadow ambush so this was a pretty good spawn as well um two were already in melee so we were able to aoe pretty quickly i'm going to be running this way and again our demon hunter ran behind the boss to knock that one the issue with this is the player with, with Shadow Ambush needs to be aware of their position because as you can see, the ring is in melee. So he needs to move out while I try to get, grab aggro. So he does a good job at this. He moves out a little bit earlier than um, than before because I'm trying to grab aggro. Shadow Ambush goes off and then I move in to make sure he's not prey on the weak. So it's just the same rotation over and over again. And then we're going to, I think we'll just, we'll look for one more ad spawn. So we'll fast forward a little bit here. So here's like probably the last bird assassins of the fight. Now again, she was facing towards her spawn, so I'm running this way, and our melee DPS are going to run behind and use their AoE effects to get them out. And then we're going to stack back up right in the middle. So the, the general positioning on this fight is going to be, you're gonna, you can start at the entrance, and then you're going to move to the middle of the room, and you're going to constantly gather up. You're going to split out in certain ways. Like I mentioned, flare works, spectral sight works, AoE effects like death and decay, earthquake, um, blizzard those can all get them out as long as you're making sure it's in the center of the circle and then one weird trick that 
they do in the MDI, they do in a high competitive setting, is that mages, for some weird reason, there's a trick you can do when you spawn mirror images, for some reason, all of the ads just come out and rush to the middle. So, like, mages can, can just do that. If it's ever, like, an awkward overlap, you can just pop mirror images and they'll all come running towards the center of the room. For some weird reason, I don't know why. I don't know if that works with other weird abilities. Like, I don't know if, like, Mecha Gnome can do that as well. So that's something I'd have to test in the future, but mages can do that as well. So kind of kind of tricky, but that's pretty much the fight. Like there's not really much to it. Let's quickly talk about, I'm gonna show you like what it looks like from above as well, what the positioning and the movement should look like. So this is what it would look like in logs. This is an overhead view. This is her room. It's kind of fuzzy because I'm super zoomed in on the map, but her spawn is here and this is the room that we're positioned in. So as you can see, we're gonna pull her to this spot. Melee are gonna stack up here. Um, we're gonna stay pretty stacked because we don't want to be, you know, preyed on. And then as soon as Dave gets that first shadow ambush, he's gonna move any second now. He's gonna slightly move out, so that expires on him. You'll see that there. As soon as it does, we kind of gather on him, and then we move back to the boss. Add spawn, and I roar and we split up, just like I said before. Melee go off and kind of converge on the middle, and we're gonna make sure we're meeting right back here, right in the middle of the room. The longer these ads are in stealth, the more damage they're going to do to your group. They put a dot that lasts for like 20 seconds or so. That's just this ticking damage. So the more stacks you have, the more damage you're going to take. Typically, two or more stacks is pretty dangerous. One stack is pretty much going to happen every time to at least a few players. But if you have two or more stacks, like that player needs to use some kind of defensive and you need to make sure you're spot healing them. Um, the assassins are going to gather up in the middle here. These things are going to eventually disappear once the ads die. And then it's this sem same rotation, right? The player with Shadow Ambush is going to just step out of group and then run back in when they can. Cutilate, I think. Duh, oh no, here. <laughs> so A runs out, the Shadow Ambush goes off, and then we're all going to slowly move back to him to converge, and then we're going to just stack back up on the boss. So the positioning is kind of this like stack, spread, stack, spread throughout the entire encounter. The biggest thing also is that a lot of players are scared to spread out like over a large area. Like, don't be afraid of that you have like nine or ten seconds to like leave group and do your thing and get back to someone and as soon as you're within someone's range it resets so you can just like step into someone again and then move back out so this fight you have to just kind of be self-aware of that kind of stuff here we're gonna we're gonna have melee get this side i'm gonna get these two and then we're gonna stack back up where it's easiest for us to grab aggro dave's gonna run out and then we're gonna stack on him and then we're gonna move back in so it's just again stack spread stack spread so I hope this kind of helps. This is the first time I'm actually showing kind of the visual movements from above, but I thought it was kind of helpful. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. But that is pretty much the strategy slash guide on how to tank Domina Venomblade. She is uh, actually one of my favorite bosses in the instance and actually in, in Shadowlands so far. Her mechanics are very simple, but they're very like intricate on kind of how like you need to move throughout the fight and like the aggro is a lot of fun to play with at least as a tank um but if you guys have a boss that you've been struggling with or that you'd like to know a better strategy on how to tank let me know in the comment section below if you like this video leave that thumbs up button or hit that hit that thumbs up button yeah hit that thumbs up button hit that subscribe bell if you like content like this and i will catch you all in the next one take care